Hello, in this video, we will see 9 interesting facts about protein synthesis and secretion. Let's get started. This is a cell. Its nucleus contains DNA. The RNA is synthesized using DNA as a template. Then it exits the nucleus and goes to ribosomes. Ribosomes synthesize proteins using this RNA. Everybody knows this, right? So let's see the interesting part. The first one is regarding ribosomes. They are found in the cytosol as well as on the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Both these ribosomes are biochemically identical and are in equilibrium. When a ribosome starts synthesizing cytosolic protein, it diffuses away from the endoplasmic reticulum. The synthesis is then completed in cytosol. And when it is synthesizing a protein that is to be secreted or a membrane protein, it gets attached to the endoplasmic reticulum. This localization is guided by a signal sequence. It is a small sequence of amino acids in the protein that is being synthesized. This sequence is seen only with secretory proteins and membrane proteins. As the ribosome starts synthesizing the protein, this sequence appears first. It takes the ribosome to the endoplasmic reticulum. Here the synthesis of remaining chain is completed. The sequence is then removed from the protein during post-translational modification. In the case of cytosolic protein, no such sequence is seen. In that case, the ribosome diffuses into the cytosol and protein is synthesized in the cytosol. In short, ribosomes in cytosol and on rough endoplasmic reticulum are identical and in equilibrium. Their localization depends on which type of protein they are synthesizing. So this was our first point. The next point is regarding the site of protein synthesis. Yes, it's already been touched in previous point, but here we will see some more detail. The proteins required in the cytosol are synthesized in the cytosol. For example, cytosolic guanylylcyclase. The secretory proteins and membrane proteins are synthesized on the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Here, secretory proteins enter the lumen of the rough endoplasmic reticulum. For example, insulin. Membrane proteins, on the other hand, enter the membrane right when they are being synthesized. For example, sodium potassium ATPase pump. It's necessary to synthesize the proteins at their respective places because once they are synthesized, they cannot enter or cross the lipid bilayer. So that was our second point. Now the third one, secretory pathway of the proteins. This pathway applies to both secretory proteins and membrane proteins. As we have already seen, they both are synthesized in rough endoplasmic reticulum. From here, they travel to outer side of the network. Secretory proteins travel in the lumen and membrane proteins travel along the membrane. Here they are packed in transport vesicles. In the vesicle, secretory proteins stay in the lumen and membrane proteins remain on the membrane. These vesicles fuse with cis-Golgi cistern, which is the innermost cistern in the stack. From here, the proteins pass through each secule in the Golgi complex. This transport is also carried out by transport vesicles. During the passage, post-translational modification of proteins take place. For example, acquisition of tertiary and quaternary structure. These and other modifications occur throughout their passage through rough endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi complex. Finally, the proteins reach the trans-Golgi, which is the outermost secure. Here the proteins are sorted according to their final destination. Proteins for same destination are packed in same vesicle. Secretory proteins are packed in secretory vesicles. They store the proteins. When cell receives a signal to secrete these proteins, they are released out of the cell by process of exocytosis. The membrane proteins go to their target organelle or cell membrane by a similar fusion of these vesicles. So this is the secretory pathway of the proteins. This diagram is showing the entire pathway. We will see the remaining points in this diagram, which brings us to our next point. 
throughout the transit. No mixing occurs between cytosolic and luminal content. Secretory proteins are always confined in a membrane closed structure. These structures in order are rough endoplasmic reticulum, transport vesicles, Golgi apparatus and secretory vesicles. Next point. Resident proteins of any organelle do not get swept along the flow. For example, this protein belongs to Golgi apparatus. It's involved in processing of the proteins. When vesicles are being formed, this protein is not incorporated into the vesicles. It always stays here. Likewise, resident proteins of endoplasmic reticulum also stays there only. The next point is regarding the transport of vesicles. We have seen that vesicles take proteins from one place to the other. Now this movement is not random. The vesicles move along microtubules which are part of cytoskeleton. This movement is carried out by motor proteins like kinesin. They hold vesicles on one end and walk on the microtubules by the other end. Isn't that interesting how every small step is taken care very well by the cell? Ok, next point. Membrane proteins are inserted in the membrane in their final topology. But first, what is topology? It's an orientation of membrane protein across the membrane. For example, in this sodium potassium ATPase pump, this domain is inside the cell and this domain is outside the cell. This is the topology of this protein. A particular orientation is important for a protein to work properly and it's taken care of right when it's being synthesized. For this domain to eventually face the cytosol, the protein is incorporated in the membrane with this domain facing the cytosol right from the beginning. And it faces the cytosol throughout its transit too. The reason this is required is once inside the membrane, the proteins cannot flip. So they need to be inserted in their final topology right from the beginning. Next point is about the degradation of faulty proteins. When a misfolded or unassembled protein is produced, it's tagged with ubiquitin. Ubiquitin tags protein for destruction. The protein is then removed from the endoplasmic reticulum by a special process called retrotranslocation. Then proteasome degrades such faulty proteins. Now the last point is regarding backflow of the membrane. We have been moving everything from endoplasmic reticulum to the periphery. And now it's time to bring some stuff back. See, when a vesicle pinches off, it takes a portion of membrane of that organelle. When it fuses with the target organelle, the membrane becomes part of that organelle. During secretion, the membrane is carried all the way up to the cell membrane. If the membrane moves only in one direction, the size of donor organelle would decrease and the size of acceptor will increase. To prevent this, there is a system to bring the membrane portion back to the source. So every structure maintains constant size. Pinocytosis is part of this backflow. So these were all the points. And of course we will have a summary. 1. Ribosomes in cytosol and on rough endoplasmic reticulum are identical and in equilibrium. Their location depends on which type of protein they are synthesizing. 2. Cytosolic proteins are synthesized in cytosol. Secretory proteins are synthesized on rough endoplasmic reticulum and they enter the lumen. Membrane proteins are also synthesized on rough endoplasmic reticulum but they enter the membrane. This is needed because once protein is synthesized, it cannot enter or cross the lipid bilayer. Third, after synthesis, proteins travel to the outer side of the endoplasmic reticulum. From here, transport vesicles take the proteins to the Golgi complex. In Golgi, proteins are further processed and sorted according to their targets. Secretory proteins are secreted and membrane proteins go to the cell membrane or target organelles. 4. No mixing occurs between cytosol and lumen of these structures throughout the transport of the protein. 5. Resident proteins are not swept along the flow. They stay in their home organelles. 6. Vesicles are carried by motor proteins like kinesin 
along microtubules of cytoskeleton. 7. Membrane proteins are inserted in the membrane with their final topology. 8. Faulty proteins are tagged with ubiquitin and destroyed by proteasome. And finally 9. Backflow of the membrane helps maintain constant size of every organelle. So these are all the interesting facts about protein synthesis and secretion. That's it for this video. If you feel this video will help your friends and colleagues, please share it with them too. And don't forget to subscribe because lots more to come. At Nonstop Neuron, learning medical concepts is as easy as watching cartoons. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.